Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. Today we're going to really dig deep in that famous scripture, Loud Pipes Save Lives. I think it must be somewhere in the Bible. we got Alan Smith here with us. His uh, ministry is bishopsheentoday.com. We're going to talk about Fulton Sheen. We're going to talk about Loud Pipes Saves Lives. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. You know, the, the, the famous scripture ver- la- verse, loud pipes saves lives, is what we're going to talk about today. Actually, there is kind of a scripture verse like that. It's about John the Baptist out in the wilderness, uh, r- roaring like a lion, repent, prepare the way of the Lord. And we need to hear loud pipes. We need to open up our vocal cords we need to open up our, our, our mouths and our hearts, and we need to proclaim the gospel. Now, more than at any time, we need to proclaim and make straight the way of the Lord. Although most bikers like curvy roads, you know, we do know that, we do know that the straight road is the, is the safe road. We know um, as bikers that when I, when I have loud, you, people hear the loud motorcycle pipes uh, of the bikes going by them, and we, I actually make mine louder than they need to be but special carbs on them because why is that it's because people know that i'm coming and it's a and it's a it's a safety feature that's why most bikers have louder pipes than maybe you think they need it's not because they're showing off or they want to be act tough it's because we know if you hear us coming we're safer uh but i can't think of a better illustration than uh bikers on bikes uh riding and those loud uh those loud pipes roaring as an example of what men need to be today. Alan Smith is here with me. He's a member of Knights on Bikes. I'm a member of Knights on Bikes. And I think of all the Catholic bikers, the Catholic Cross Bears, um, motorcycle ministry, the Iron Deacons, the, the, uh, so, many, uh, so many Catholic biker clubs, the, uh, the uh, Emmaus uh, bikers down in uh, Miami. Um, we need, as men, to let the loud pipes roar. Loud pipes save lives. People so often say, well, you know, St. Francis said one time, when we go into a town, uh, what shall we say? And he said, oh, we'll just, we're just going to, we're just going to minister and use words when necessary. Well, guess what? We're not all St. Francis. Men are probably more like John the Baptist. And it's necessary for your voice to be heard. When you're with your friends, talk story with them about your, your life, your real life, and what Jesus has done for you, and ask them questions, uh, and invite them to say, what's going on in your life? Have a dialogue with people. But I have found that when I'm talking with people, the sooner that I can say to them, hey, do you mind if I pray with you? And I pray, the Holy Spirit shows up with, with, with fire. Like John the Baptist you know, said, he would, he'll baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Pray, let the, let the, the pipes of your voice become the pipes of God, and proclaim the gospel. We don't need watered-down, genderless males. We need real men. This is the time for real manliness, real men to proclaim the gospel. Of course, you know we're speaking to you women, too. We know that in a lot of ways you're already on fire and you want your men to join you. But, men, we ask you to start, uh, start to proclaim the gospel more. And you start that, the way you start that is you proclaim the gospel first in your hour of prayer every morning. Get with the Lord, spend time with Jesus, and he, you're going to be so emboldened, you won't be able to stand it if you don't share the gospel. Alan Smith is here with us. He's been on EWTN many times. He has two radio shows. Plus, he's, uh, he's, he's, uh, he has his own gig as a plumber. Uh, he's a member of Knights on Bikes. So I want to ask you this question, Al. Tell me about your first motorcycle. Oh, it was uh, a Kawasaki 100. It's an enduro. <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> uh, you know, it, it's funny. Dirt bikes are great. I think everybody should ride a dirt bike for, you know, a couple of years at least. And um, uh, it really just helps you. Uh, but also, too, there's a little bit of um, 
defiance in there when you have your dirt bike and you go down the street you're not supposed to be on the the road with it but you still ride it on the road and of course you just maneuver around and we had a, a bunch of hills by railroad tracks when i grew up so we had a great time we'd just go out and bring a jerry can of gas and just spend out all day just uh i've never ridden a road bike man never done that You've never been a dirt bike. No, I have a, a dirt oh. bike. I mean, yeah, I, I, my yeah. first bike was a Rebel, a Honda Rebel 250, which is probably misnamed, you know. <laughs> that was yeah. my first bike. Yeah. Um, you know, there's the Honda Shadow, but uh, right now I ride uh, a Harley Sportster. And, um, you know, I think it's just one of these things. You, We always talk about loud pipes. I, I make sure my baffles are out. I just uh, have, uh, I put some Vance and Hine short shots on there. Mm-hmm. Um, the baffles go in when the complaints come. So uh, uh-huh. <laughs> I, always start this, I start the season without the baffles. And then I might put them in a little bit later, but uh, it's true. I mean, it's crazy out there and you've been on the road. Uh, it's nice to have a little bit of a warning that we're here but and not, not everybody pays attention for the bike. I mean, you think about it when you're riding, when you, if you're driving along and somehow you're drifting and you hear the sound of a semi trucks horn, you know, it's a big thing, you know, <laughs> but the motorcycle <laughs> horn is like beep, beep. So I, I don't beep the horn. I, I, I don't want to, I just rev my engine. And people, mm-hmm. you, the cars will just kind of swerve when they don't see you. I, and I'm very, very careful not to be in their blind spot. You know, if I'm going to pass, I pass and things like that. But what do you think about what I was saying about how we need to have the loud pipes, uh, the John the Baptist voice heard again? Yes. I mean, on the back of my motorcycle helmet is loud pipes save lives. I've always believed in that. And um, But I think it comes from my radio years. I've been on the radio for 25 years. And people always say, you have a very soothing voice, but you also have a great set of pipes. <laughs> and um, again, I always thought, but, and again, of course, I'm a pipe fitter. Mm-hmm. And uh, I actually have the nickname, the pipe padre. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's kind of funny because you fix people's pipes during the day uh, and you come into their house. And I've been on radio for years. And so many of my customers listen to me on Sunday mornings uh, when I do the Holy Rosary, the Chaplet of Mercy, Bishop Sheen, uh, they know my voice. And uh, so I get to witness to them and to share the gospel. Uh, but again, I think it's this whole idea of, um, again, as a lay evangelist, I think once we were baptized, we were given the grace, we were given the many gifts to proclaim the gospel. And I think we forget that. We forget that we were called to be priest, prophet, and king. But no one reminded me that, mm. hey, you're priest, prophet, and king. If we don't do it, who's going to do it? If the, if the boots on the ground that aren't going to do it, people aren't going to go to mass and, and show up. And, you know, the, we got to get them there first, right? So it's the boots on the ground that, that really make the difference. The, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's the time of the laity right now. Right. And it's in all things from uh, the words we say, from the clothing we mm-hmm. wear. Um, I said to my son years ago, I am not afraid to preach the gospel. When I was in high school, I went to a public high school and I had uh, T-shirts that said, Alleluia, praise mm-hmm. the Lord, <laughs> Jesus saves. I uh, wasn't afraid to be a walking billboard for Christ. Mm-hmm. And when I grew up and had my own business, I said, I'm going to still preach the gospel. And so on my clothing, uh, people that know my clothing, it's the gas man and the words of Padre Pio, pray, trust, don't worry. And it's amazing Mm. when people look at your back. Talk about a warrior, Padre Pio. Yes, yes. But that message of pray, trust, don't worry, it's so um, inviting. Um, It's not, I'm not hitting anybody over the head with John 3.16. I'm just asking you to pray, Mm -hmm. to yeah, trust mm-hmm. in God and mm-hmm. don't worry. Worry mm-hmm. kills you. It mm-hmm. kills you. And it's not of the Lord. It's not of the Lord. Mm-hmm. So when I come into a customer's home and I'm fixing their pipes, they're reading my back saying, pray, trust, don't worry. Mm-hmm. And then we start talking about the gospel. So um, See, that's your, wrong. that's, that's your, uh, the Lord gave you that inspiration, you know, and, and, and God, uh, w- there's, there's a, there's an avenue into people's hearts that God has ordained for you to have. It's not like we have to try hard. We just need to pray and show up when the when the Lord opens those doors. And there's a lot of different, you know what? My good friend Jay Flunker, he's a cast member of Long Ride Home. I dig this guy so much. He just breathes evangelization. What he says to everybody is good morning. No matter what time of day, he says good morning. Uh, when we were riding our motorcycles uh, through the, the, to the big bend in the deep, 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 uh, wilderness of, of Texas, 
he had to go back and get his bike repaired. So he was riding by us himself. So we stopped at this one store before we took the south turn towards Mexico on these little back roads. And uh, we said, there's going to be a guy coming in here in about two hours. And he's going to say good morning to you. When he does, ask him to give you a T-shirt because we knew he had some long ride home T-shirts. And he walked in. He said, good morning. And it was uh, it's because when you say good morning, when he says good morning, people go, what do you mean? It's four in the afternoon. His mercies are new every morning. And he, that opens the door. So there's there's avenues and ways that we need to pray. We're talking with uh, Al Smith, by the way. He's a newest member of Bears Man Cave, which you can join. It's a private, secret Facebook group. You can only join by going to deepadventure.com. But one of the things that we've always had at our Deep Adventure store is this, and now it's part of our, our Catholic ammo kit, by the way, is the book, little, the little blue book that he put together, Fulton Sheen's Wartime prayer book. You got it there too, Al? I'm showing it for those who are watching this on YouTube. We love this thing. I didn't know that was the Al Smith, but I've been I've been uh, quoting from this in the man cave for years, and we uh, we have it on our website, and it's part of the, the, the Bears Man Cave ammo kit. We have all kinds of cool stuff inside a, an ammo box for men. It's a spiritual Catholic ammo kit. You check all that out at deepadventure.com if you want to find out more about Al Smith. Uh, you can go to bishopsheentoday.com. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Hey, man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. Mahalo for your kokua in supporting us. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to you, our listeners, for supporting the Bear Wozniak Adventure radio show at deepadventure.com. We would not be able to bring you our radio show with its uniquely powerful and gritty outreach without your help. You can become part of our pack. You can support our ministry by going to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak or by just going to deepadventure.com and clicking on the Patreon link and become a part of our outreach. That's deepadventure.com. Once again, mahalo for your kokua. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Today we have... Uh, a man has been in EWTN many t times. He's 25 years with Catholic Radio in Canada. Is that how you say it? Canada? Our neighbors Canada. to the north up there in Canada. Uh, <laughs> I've heard of Canada. No, actually, I get to I get to speak at the Regina uh, men's event there this fall, and so it's going to be pretty cool to go up go up to Canada. I, I used to have a cabin actually two miles from Canada up in the Glacier Park area of Montana, and I went fishing there once. And I, we get in a fishing boat, Al. And they're they're loading it up with steaks and burgers and hot dogs and and of course some whiskey and some beer and I'm like, I thought we were going fishing. Are we going to eat the fish we catch? And it's like, <laughs> no, we're gonna be we're gonna be feasting on on in case we don't catch any fish. But so good to have a Canadian Hoovian in here in the house. Al Smith's ministry is bishopsheentoday.com. How did you get into? I remember as a kid, my mother would always put on Fulton Sheen in the mornings on Sunday mornings. Uh, how did you how did you uh, get into um, uh, Fulton Sheen? Yeah, it was a, a total God incident. Um, my wife and I in 2009 were dropping one of our uh, daughters off to a small Catholic college called Our Lady Seat of Wisdom College, and I was getting my daughter settled settled to her dorm. And like a good dad, I wanted to make sure that, if, you know, <laughs> she was in protective custody. <laughs> and, um, you know, I my wife was busy in the library, looking through the, the library to see what books were in the library of the college. And there was a little uh, free book uh, box and uh, they were clearing out some of the old um, books. And my wife saw the 
word free, of course. And uh, she picked up this little book uh, by Fulton Sheen just called Peace of Soul and uh, a little tattered paperback. And uh, she read this book to me on the way home uh, wow. from the drive. And it was, you know, what a great was, wife. She is a great wife. And what got me was the very first line of this book, Peace of Soul, is unless souls are saved, nothing is saved. And it was that line, unless souls are saved, nothing is saved. I said, this Bishop Sheen, he's got my attention because I'm into saving souls. I love that. It's, well, um, think about this, Al. Right now, so many people are focused on the political environment, and it's tough. Gnarly things with China. I know members of the... Uh -huh of uh, the Foreign Service are my neighbors here and this just got basically pulled out of Beijing. Um, that's gnarly. They're, the stuff that's been going on on the street, you know, uh, this summer is gnarly. Uh, the coronavirus is gnarly. Uh, the the so-called deep state and all of that is gnarly. Uh, and it's very real. But unless people are saved, nothing is saved. Unless you change people's hearts and introduce them to Jesus Christ, you might as well not be marching in the street. You might as well not be, um, you know, being politically active is important, but if it doesn't start with changing hearts, uh, then nothing will be saved. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that line, unless souls are saved, nothing is saved. He got my attention. I said, I think I need to read more of his stuff. Mm. And I said, to, I said to my wife, okay, I'm going to start. I said, can I have that book that you're reading to me? And she says, no, 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 you get your own Bishop Sheen book. And <laughs> so I, I, I look, went through his list of 66 books, and, and he wrote books on science. He wrote books on happiness. But there was a book there called Victory Over Vice. And it caught my attention. I go, well, you know, I, I like this, the vice squad, vice this. Vice. So I thought, yeah, I have a couple of sins I want to work out. Uh, I'll give it a read. And so it's a simple little book, uh, less than 100 pages, so you can read it within two hours. But this book changed my life um, in the sense that it changed my mind. Fulton Sheen uh, took the seven deadly sins, and he gave us an antidote with the seven last words. Hey, oh, with the seven last words, not the seven virtues, but the seven last words. No, okay, cool. no. And so, um, again, I, I realized that those powerful words from the cross that he spoke, I always call it the Sermon on the Mount, but it's Mount Calvary. And uh, yes, the beautiful, the cries of Jesus from the cross, which is uh, the anthology. I took, I put together seven of Sheen's books that he wrote on the seven last words. And he wrote many uh, because for 58 consecutive years, he was known for his Good Friday addresses, mm. uh, talking about our Lord's passion. And I thought, if he stood on you know, a stage or an, uh, a pulpit and thousands wanted to come see him speak on the seven last words, he's got something to say. And I started to just pay attention to all the books that he wrote on the seven last words. And he would tie them into a different theme every year. And so one year he talked about the Our Father and the seven mm. last words. The next year he talked about the Beatitudes and the seven last words. Then he talked about the seven deadly sins and the seven last words. Then the seven virtues or some of the virtues and the seven last words. Then, of course, he talked about seven types of people that drive us nuts, you know, <laughs> uh, that were there at the foot of the cross. And then he wrote about uh, the seven words, the seven times that Our Lady spoke in scripture and tied them in to the seven last words. So mm. every year he talked about the seven last words and our Lord's passion, but then he tied it into life lessons. Well, let me, let, to realize, let, let, me, yeah. let me read those seven last words. I have them here, yes. okay? Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. His second word, set of uh, last words from the cross, today you will be with me in paradise. His third word to Mary woman behold your son and then to John and to and to us behold your mother the fourth word my God my God why have you forsaken me from Psalm 22 the fifth word I thirst the sixth word it is finished and the seventh word father into your hands I commend my spirit those are the words that Al's talking about go ahead Al yeah. and so I, I, you know, I give parish missions and I thought, you know, I wanted to put together like a little retreat because I think you can spend a whole day just on Father Forgive um, mm. because the way Sheen, you know, I actually found nine 
uh, books that he wrote on the seven last words. And so I put seven into one book and two into another book. But you could spend all day just pondering those beautiful words. Again, mm. uh, Fulton Sheen said, uh, there is no better preacher in all of history than the dying Christ. There's no better preacher than the dying Christ. And there's no better sermon than the seven last words. Mm. It is a great sermon. And it's a sermon that I think we need to meditate on. Yes, we meditate on the Beatitudes. We, we, we hear that time and time again. But sometimes the sermon on, on Mount Calvary, we only meditate at Lent uh, about those words. We, we hear the seven last words. But it's something that we need to ponder every day. And again, if you just spend time, and I, I try to say to people, this is one thing I do, is I say to people, everyone get a crucifix in your life. Um, you know, Catholics were famous for having a crucifix in every room, uh, you know, and of course, if you were in a Catholic school, there'd be a crucifix in every classroom. Which but, is different than a cross. What's the difference between a cross and the crucifix? Well, you know, the cross sometimes is just the sign, but the crucifix, it involves us. And that's what Fulton Sheen taught me. He says, when you look at our Lord hanging on the cross, remember that you had something to do with it. Your sin put him on the cross. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why people are offended by the crucifix, because they know mm -hmm. it had some, they had something to do with it. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why they'll say, don't wear that or take that, that when down. I When I go into the into, into Catholic Church and I see the crucifix, um, that's exactly what goes through my mind. You know, it's very yes. convicting. It's not a, a, a cross is a beautiful symbol, but with Jesus on the cross, on the on the cross, the crucifix, it's very, very. Um, you, you, it shakes you up. You can't just kind of take Jesus for granted after when you see that. Yeah, and see you him. know, uh, we all want to have our picture taken one day as a saint, and um, <laughs> you know, all the holy cards that we see. But <laughs> how many holy cards do we see of the saint holding the crucifix? Mm. looking upon the Lord tenderly mm. and meditating on the cross. So we need to practice this. I, mm. I say to men, especially at men's conferences, mm. get a crucifix in your life, hold it in your hand, have it in your car, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. listen to him. And well, uh, have it with, have it on your rosary. Yes. Carry absolutely. that with you everywhere. Everywhere. So these little crucifixes, I say, put them on your desk at work, you know, put one in your pocket. Don't leave home without one. Uh, because we need to study the cross. And St. Um, oh, I just want to say, um, St. Thomas Aquinas, I, I began the book with that beautiful quote. I've heard of him. Yes. He's, <laughs> he's kind of a famous saint. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But his line that I, I just, it rings so much truth. He says, I've learned more from the crucifix than any of my books. So, this teaches wow thomas us aquinas more. said that i've learned more from the crucifix is that what he said yeah that was aquinas. I've learned wow learn more from the crucifix than any book and you know when i uh, give talks in high schools i will say to them if you never go to church if you never attend mass um have a crucifix in your life and ponder this story because you'll learn more about betrayal uh, about <laughs> just how nasty the world is when you study the story of Christ and especially him going to the cross. We're so talking this with, will go ahead, Alan, we're, ta we're talking with Alan Smith. Uh, his website is bishopsheentoday.com. Uh, we're going to be back talking about two of his anthologies that he put together, the, the Cries of Jesus from the Cross, and then also I believe it's his most recent one, The Lord Teaches to Pray, anthologies of Archbishop Fulton Sheen, who most men that I know, they dig on, they dig on Fulton Sheen, and especially this 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 little blue book that we have at our store, the Wartime Prayer Book by Fulton Sheen. It's a pocket book you can put it in your motorcycle vest. It's so small. We're talking with Alan Smith from Canada. Uh, if you could see him on our YouTube uh, right now, you would see he has got a motorcycle helmet that says "Loud Pipes Save Lives." And we as men, we need to let our pipes be heard. We need to let our voices be heard. We need to proclaim Jesus Christ. Go to deepadventure.com to to uh, Subscribe to our email newsletter and you get a free audio version of my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. If you want to find our good friend Al Smith, go to bishopsheentoday.com. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. 
Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to NotreDameFCU.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Men, yes, we mean you. Go to deepadventure.com and check out Bear's Man Cave, a men's only Facebook group. Join the pack with other men as they challenge and inspire one another to manly virtue. Plus, you can dialogue with us in our regular video chat meetups. Plus, get your exclusive content. Join at deepadventure.com. That's deepadventure.com. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to invite you. Go to our website, our webmaster, and uh, our, our people who do our social media, Fuzadi. They say, you know what? Um, this is a very difficult ministry to work with because you got so much going on. If you go to our website, there's almost too many tabs. There's a tab for our Ocean Sunrise Catechism, which we have every morning, uh, 7 a.m. Bear Wozniak time, wherever I happen to be. We, it's, and it's called Ocean Sunrise Catechism because usually the ocean is in the background. We do a 15 minute uh, teaching on, on, the, uh, on the catechism. And then of course we have the Bear Wozniak Adventure radio show. If you subscribe to our newsletter, you get it uh, the day before uh, uh, it airs and you get the video YouTube version of it. If you become a Patreon donor at certain levels, you get all of the Bear Wozniak Adventure uh, radio show sent to you. You get it months early because we record these shows way early. Plus you get all of the episodes of Long Ride Home, our TV show. And there, too, uh, you get uh, each episode as we complete them. The director's cut months before it's aired on EWTN. So go to our website, deepadventure.com. Just start clicking. The best place you can go, though, if you want to see Al Smith, is go to Bear's Man Cave. He's, a, he's a, our, one of our newest members of the Man Cave. You go, you go, you, it's for men only. Click on the link. Join the cave. We give you access to our secret Facebook group where we challenge each other. We mobilize each other. Uh, and we cur encourage each other, inspire each other, and we also uh, have uh, Zoom video chats. We've been doing it for two or three years now, the Zoom meetings, and it's pretty cool. So maybe every randomly different times of the, of the day or de different days of the week, uh, we all get together and we talk story, as we say in Hawaii, and then we read from... Uh, right now we're reading through my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. So go to our website, deepadventure.com, check it all out. We have as our guest today, Al Smith. His website is Bishop Sheen Today. Uh, so, what do you think about this? The beatification of Bishop Sheen and how that? How's that? I know you're involved in helping that. The that all all happen. Tell us about that. Yeah, I mean, it was a God incident that I ended up on the board of directors uh, for the Sheen um, cause for his canonization, and that came out of the blue. I was, um, you know, again, a funny story, just how God will use you. Um, I was had Bishop Sheen on the radio for a few years, and then I was asking Bishop Sheen one day in the Adoration Chapel. I was I do my holy hour every day, and I asked Bishop Sheen. I said, "Is there anything I could do for you as a special favor?" And uh, I kind of heard in that interior voice, he says, "I want you to go visit the seminary and talk to all the seminarians and give them my books because that's what I want you to do." And I said, "But I'm the plumber. I'm the gas." No, wait, man. wait, wait. This, this, you said this to the, him in prayer, or? Yeah, I was and just uh, pray. You just, just like we say, Thomas Aquinas, pray for. Him. So you 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 yeah. say you, you get you say this and you receive this nudge, and what yes. was okay? So that clarify. <laughs> yeah. I just want to clarify things. Okay, so yeah, and so it was I'm, what you know. And he said, "Now I want you to go if you want to do me a favor, because you said, hey, can I grant you a favor?' Uh, you know, I said, I got you on the radio. Is there anything else I can do?' Well, since you asked, okay, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go to the seminary and give out Bishop Sheen books to all the seminarians." And I oh. said, but I, I, but I said, listen, but I'm, I'm a plumber. I'm not a theologian. I, yeah, I do a Catholic radio show, but I'm not that good. And he said, just trust me. I, I got tent makers, fishermen. I got all these guys. You, you'll be fine as a plumber. You'll be okay. So I phoned the seminary up and said, can I come and do this? And the rector of the seminary said, sure. And I was met at the door by a seminarian who um, asked me, you know um, what I was doing there because he saw my gas man truck I came with my tools and everything I put my suit on but I, I was there and he says sir I want to tell you a story 
I, this is a true story. I was 18 years old. I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. One of the church ladies gave me Bishop Sheen's The Priest is Not His Own. I read that book and I signed up to become a priest. I'm in my fifth year and I got 40 Bishop Sheen books in my dorm. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> How many Welcome do you have? This... Do you have, did he have more than you at the time? Uh, no, I've got more than him. I got more than him. <laughs> you know, I've got his whole collection plus, plus, plus. So, uh, but that was my sign from God to mm. say, you're in the right spot. I greeted you at the door. And so when I did the seminary visits, uh, next thing I know, I'm at five seminaries in Canada. So I, I went and then, of course, Bishop Janke from Peoria said, I got to get this guy on my team. <laughs> you know, he's on the radio. Oh, cool. He's visiting. So Bishop Janke invites me to come sit on the board of directors for uh, the Sheen cause. And um, I'm the only non-American. So <laughs> but I come with the zeal of sharing Sheen with a whole new generation. And so the cause has been a, a real roller coaster ride. As you know, you follow it in the press. But uh, we're faithful and we know it's going to be in God's timing. And uh, it shows you the devil's act. Well, He's, you know what I, what I love? What I love about that story, Al, is it's like. People want to know, well, how did you start your radio ministry? How did you do this? Um, we, you and I, you know, we just started doing the stuff. We started doing uh -huh. the stuff. And, and, and um, it's like, I remember when I was a kid, um, how hard it was to ride a bicycle until you would kind of get it up to speed. You know, as, you know when my dad would give me a good push, I could ride it really good. And then I would kind of get my balance, and then I kind of learned how to turn. If you're trying to serve the Lord, uh, the way to serve the Lord is to serve the Lord. Just start doing the stuff. As you get making progress, then the Lord can direct you. But if you're standing, if you're just sitting on the couch saying, Lord, why aren't you using me? Um, it's probably because you're not doing the stuff. So as you start, it's like driving, a, uh, trying to turn the wheel of a car in the old days when they didn't have power steering. It was really hard until you started to move the car. Then you could steer it. So if you're listening to this and you want the Lord to use you, then start doing the stuff. It's almost like we start out doing the stuff like when I was a kid and we got those, we got the pretend hammers, you know, that you could hammer with and the pretend screwdrivers. And you kind of start out that way. And pretty soon that little pretend hammer starts becoming the hammer of God. You know, you begin to, to grow in the gifts and the talents that God's naturally given to you to do. If you want to do the stuff, look at the gifts God's already given you. You don't have to be someone else in who you are and start just doing the stuff. And in time, God will begin to fill that, that work that you're doing with his power and his grace, and he began to direct you. But he can't direct you as long as you're just sitting on the couch doing nothing. And look, you started out just out of heartfelt love for the for Fulton Sheen and began to do the stuff. And and now, uh, you know, you have these beautiful books. You're on the the Fulton Sheen, uh, I guess, what is it called for the cause of his sainthood? Well, they call it, yeah, yeah the cause, cause of his canonization. Yeah. And, I mean, they have a board of directors, and uh, we serve three-year terms, and... Um, you just help out where you can. And, um, you know, that's what I've always done is that it's kind of like, put me in coach, oh, uh, beautiful. you know, put me in, put me in. And again, that one line that I think you've heard it many times, I've heard it, God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the call. So mm -hmm. he doesn't, he doesn't call the qualified. I wasn't qualified, but he, he qualified me over time and with the help of the Blessed Virgin Mary too and all the angels and saints uh, there's a lot of people um, that are behind me <laughs> behind so me. so beautiful I remember I used to man when I was younger you know uh, playing football I would hassle that coach man I'd be standing right next to him the whole time saying put me in and that's a, that's the that attitude of, of, of service and when you spend time with in prayer with the Lord every day uh, you can't have, there's so much energy building up in you, you just got to get it, get it out somehow and express that. Hey, tell us for a little moment here, what's that, that biker vest you've got in the corner over there? Uh, your, that's the I, nights, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's the nights on bikes. And um, I think it's kind of the um, signature. I think everybody that knows, uh, all the members know that's a nights on bikes vest. If I turn the vest around and you see my patches, I have the Pipe Padre, I have JMJ, I have St. Michael, you know, uh, when you collect patches, you, you get What's very in the colorful. vest pocket? What's in the vest pocket? Oh, and is, is a relic of Father Michael J. McGivney. Wow. Soon to be blessing yes. to give me now yes. i have it i have it above my shoulder if people uh -huh. see there's so i have a relic of saint john bosco i have a relic of father mcgivney of course i have relics of bishop shane and yeah. other, other relics that people have given me do you, have, me over a, do you the have your wartime prayer the little blue book that you put together oh yeah yeah you have that yeah, in your vest that, uh that's in my vest and, and that's what about also a rosary in, 
a rosary. Now, I have my own rosary in that, um, so th- I'm the gas man. So my wife and I make our own little rosaries. We take, we just take, take bolts and nuts and bolts, right? <laughs> and we just string them together with uh, rosary bead string. Why would a manly and- guy like you want to have a rosary? Uh, because I am a child of Mary and she's my mom and I'm proud of her. Mm. And this is the whole thing is that Fulton Sheen, he, he, he set me straight with mama. He really did. First thing he did was he, he made me feel sorry and told me that you made her cry because remember I put, I put our Lord on the cross with my sin Mm. and she's at the, she's at the foot of the cross weeping. She's losing her son and Al Smith, the gas man, Al Smith, the pipe padre, you had something to do with it. You made your mother cry. So mm. you better go apologize to her. Tell her you're sorry. Tell her you won't do that again. Mm. And love her. Spend time with her. Because Fulton Sheen said, uh, if you want to become a Christian, who better to go to than Mary to be formed? Um, she formed she, Jesus. I mean, she formed her Jesus. inner woman yeah. raised yeah. him up. So, yeah. So having this rosary that, uh, you know, I have that has a pardon crucifix, it has a miraculous medal, uh, has a St. Joseph. Um, Terror of Saint demons. Joseph. Right yes. there. We're talking um, to Alan Smith. His ministry is bishopsheentoday.com. It's flying by, Al. we got to take a break. Uh, find out more about him at bishopsheentoday.com, his new book. Uh, he has two beautiful books out by Sophia Press. If Sophia did it, you know they're good. Lord, Teach Us to Pray, an anthology of Fulton Sheen, The Cries of Jesus from the Cross, an anthology of Fulton Sheen. And you can go to our website, deepadventure.com, and get this blue little wartime prayer book. It fits in your motorcycle vest. And uh, and uh, it's also part of our Catholic spiritual ammo kit that we have at our website, too. So uh, we'll be right back with more of uh, Al Smith, and uh, we'll be talking more about Fulton Sheen. It's the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Hey, man. I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Mahalo for your kokua in supporting us. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to you, our listeners, for supporting the Bear Wozniak adventure radio show at deepadventure.com. We would not be able to bring you our radio show with its uniquely powerful and gritty outreach without your help. You can become part of our pack. You can support our ministry by going to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak or by just going to deepadventure.com and clicking on the Patreon link and become a part of our outreach. That's deepadventure.com. Once again, mahalo for your kokua. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak, our co-adventure guide today. Uh, with me today is Al Smith. His ministry is bishopsheentoday.com. He's also known as the gas man. He's a plumber slash uh, everything else. He's doing the stuff. He does sp- par- parish missions. He's done a lot of shows on EWTN. He has two radio shows. He's been in Catholic radio for over 25 years. We're talking about the rosary. What were you, and I had to interrupt you for the break. Why would a manly guy like you want to have the rosary? Why would that be important to you? 
Well, <laughs> you know, I think what it is 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 a witness, and it's actually a sign that is respected. I mean, how many times do you go down the highway and you look in people's cars? They got a rosary hanging from hanging from the rearview mirror. Not not um, not double dice. Not but double rosary. dice, but the rosary. <laughs> okay. And, you know, I, I'll talk to people and say, hey, that's a nice rosary you got in your car. Oh, well, it just it's my good luck charm. Or, <laughs> you know, do you ever pray? Do you ever take it down and pray? Oh, well, no, no, it's just there, you know. And um, so mm. it's a, first of all, it's a sign of our faith. It has the crucifix. Again, you can mm-hmm. learn more from the crucifix than any book. Um, it is uh, a witness uh, to say, I say to people, you know what? Um, I want to meditate on scripture. And this helps me to meditate on scripture it does how uh, does it do that well when you uh (laughs) pray all 20 mysteries you're actually reading through the bible because and um, it's that beautiful time i mean you think start with the joyful mysteries when we talk about the annunciation Mm -hmm. i mean that's the greatest story ever that Mm -hmm. uh, god so loved the world he said i want to take on human flesh and mary Mm -hmm. said yes so if she says yes i got to say yes to Mm -hmm. jesus right beautiful example the second mystery of the joyful mystery, visitation. Hey, she she took. So you're saying the whole time while you're praying the rosary, if for each decade, there's a certain thing that you're from the gospel about Jesus. There's something that as Catholics we're meditating on that reality. That's right. And the more yeah. it's just like it's like uh, I have as a surfer, I have certain marks and cuts on my body that are from surfing. You know, like I bear the marks of surfing. Like we want to bear the marks of Christ as we meditate on these different mysteries, it's like as if it's being just pressed and imprint, it's imprinted into our soul. Each one of those 20 mysteries is so uh, imprinted in us that it's almost like we bear the mark of that gospel on our soul. And we, it's a place that we've go to often, meditating on each of these, these, these 20, 20 mysteries. Also, you have the picture of a Padre Pio behind you. I believe that's Padre Pio I see back yes. there. Um, Oh man, the, you know when I as I returned, I was as a charismatic Catholic. As I returned to the church, um, Padre Pio, bring me bring me my weapon. I go, what does he mean by that? And for the first time in my life as a man, uh, praying the Rosary. Uh, for me, the Rosary is. I never pray. I never go to battle without my Rosary. I never pray intercessory prayer without my Rosary. I have found so much power in praying the rosary and li- lifting up certain people in certain situations and it's just like god shows up you know why because he really loves his mother <laughs> mm-hmm. you know like just like no different than at the wedding of cana she interceded and she intercedes on our behalf and he loves he loves it when we go to his mother he really loves his mom absolutely and she won't refuse us um she's a mother i mean mm-hmm. i know a lot of times people always say when you pray what kind of answers are you expecting? And, you know, Fulton Sheen said, expect three answers. Sometimes it's yes, sometimes it's no, and sometimes it's wait, just Mm -hmm. wait. Mm -hmm. And I can see the Blessed Mother saying that to us too. Yes to some things, no to other things, and you might have to wait for this, but always just to know, to really just embrace God's holy will. And I Mm -hmm. I think that's a difficult thing. As she did, right, in her, as she did. She Uh, said, not my, uh, she said, what, give me the words. Yeah. The caveat. Uh, be, she said, be, be done, done to me according to thy word. To that thy means, word. So she said, Amen. Yes. Yeah. So she, um, again, is a good mother. And I think this is one thing that Fulton Sheen did for me. He said, you got to work on this relationship because a lot of us have mother wounds. And mm. it, it kind of goes over to our relationship with the Blessed Mother. If we have a strained relationship with our own moms, Sometimes it might take a little bit extra for us to start developing a relationship with Mary. And uh, again, many of our listeners can, t- can testify to say, yeah, I don't have the best relationship with my mom. Uh, my mom was a disciplinarian. I, I'm one of 12 children. Oh, and when yeah. Dad went, yeah. <laughs> when, when Dad went to work, she had to get the stick out. She and, might not uh, have been a disciplinarian, but she had to be. <laughs> she had to be. Especially having you around, probably, you know. I, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm the <laughs> ringleader. I'm the ringleader. She didn't grow but, up thinking, I'm going to be a disciplinarian, but with 12 kids, you got to yeah. become a drill sergeant. Yeah. I know. But uh, this whole thing of uh, a mother wound, um, again, I think we have to ask the Lord for healing, uh, heal our relationships with our parents, uh, especially our mothers. And as I said earlier, Fulton Sheen. 
Go ahead. Go ahead. No, he made me feel. He he said, "I want you to ponder what you've done, how you've um, hurt her heart through your sin. So turn away mm -hmm. from sin, and Mum will love you even more." Yeah, she <laughs> was there at the more. cross, seeing what your sins had done. You know, when I was younger, I remember being in high school, and I hear every night. I I I would like maybe in football or something, I would hear someone say something about one of my sisters that was not right. And I would get really, uh, never nothing that made me more upset than that. And I remember it happening on a couple occasions. And, and they paid their dues. You know, maybe on the, on, the, on the football field, they paid their due a little more than they needed to during practice from me. But I get so many uh, uh, responses on my Facebook page when, uh, from Protestants, especially, just denigrating Mary. Like, you don't need Mary. She's dead and in the grave. Or, you know, all you need is Jesus. You don't need Mary. And it's, and it's, I, I get that same feeling when people uh, denigrate her like that. It's like, I don't think Jesus, Don, Don Calloway is such a great guy to hang around with, right? Because uh -huh. his love for Mary. But when I went on the pilgrimage to Israel with him, his mom was there. Wow. And so you saw the way she would kind of take care of his needs, like she'd have his books ready, she'd have this ready, and there's this beautiful father, uh, son-mother relationship mirroring for us the image of, of, our, of our relationship with Mary. But people think, oh, all Mary, Mary wasn't really necessary. She was just the one, she was just the pipe that Jesus came through, and they just totally put her on the shelf, and yet you think about it, Jesus, if he's all God and all man, if someone spoke about my mother like that I would be so uh, I would be so offended and to just put her on a shelf is so wrong to think that we're going to offend Jesus by honoring his mother you know when people talk, speak well about my mom she's been gone now for quite a while but people loved her when they speak well about her it makes me happy it doesn't make me upset why aren't you saying that about me instead of my mom you know yeah. And Fulton Sheen, he would uh, add to that, and he would say a few things. Like, again, he used the scriptures so well, and I think Dr. Scott Hahn defends Our Lady so beautifully in a number of his books, but uh, both Fulton Sheen and Dr. Scott Hahn, and they would say things like, you know, open your Bible. Does it not say, all generations will call me blessed? I mean, that's right from scripture. Are you calling God a liar? Like, hold up your Bible. Are you calling God a liar? All generations will call me blessed. And I always say that um, our Lord chose Mary twice. Um, of course, he chose to take on human flesh and to let her be uh, his mother. But when they found him in the temple, and he was 12 years old, and of course, he was teaching uh, those around him. And she came in, she said, you know, look what you've done to us, you know. I mean, she had We're lost distraught. the Lord for three yeah. She was distraught. She lost the Lord for three days. She lost God for three days. Just but like in the, he, yeah, go ahead, yeah. in the grave. But he yeah. decided, he, he was bar, mitf bar mitzvah age. He could have stayed there. He could have just said, you know, hey, I'm ready to be here. This will be my mission to work in the temple, to teach, to preach. But he said, you know what, I want to go back home with you and be formed by you for more. And he grew in wisdom and stature before both men and God as he submitted to them. Yeah, yeah. So he chose her. He chose to come into, come into the world through her, and he chose to live with her even though he was an adult in the church at Bar Mitzvah. And, he says, I'm going home with you, Mom. And that's why you hear so much more of the intimacy of Mary. You have that sense, the more, or, or even the more, the more intimacy of who Jesus is because she hung out with John after Jesus uh, uh, ascended and John got to hear the backstory about when he was a little boy you know oh, Jesus did you know John had that more of that cosmic and also more intimate look at him uh, the other thing is about is Jesus would call her woman people think oh see he just calls her woman he doesn't call her mom no she's the woman she's the new Eve it's very significant uh, that he said to John behold your mother we're talking with uh, Al Smith uh, he's his ministry is at bishopsheentoday.com and his new book uh, the newest book is is the one that's the uh, Lord Teach Us to Pray. Anthology of Fulton Sheen. I'm holding up for those who are watching it on our YouTube. And the Cries of Jesus from the Cross. Uh, an anthology of Jesus. Powerful. But we love our little blue wartime prayer book. I had no idea that when I ordered these books from Amazon that you're the one, you know that we're shipping them, you're shipping them out to us. So we love these. We have these on our website, deepadventure.com too. Al, um, we got to go. We've got to have you back on our show. 
All right. Time went too I, fast. It, we, we just started. We just scratched yeah. the surface. I, I'd love to come to Hawaii and do a seven-day retreat. We'll do it. I'll, I'll lead a retreat. We'll go through Fulton Sheen's The Seven Last Words. Wouldn't that be uh, cool? That would be great. Well, maybe we'll do it. Uh, we're going to – we we do a, a December thing that we do down in uh, Florida every every December. First weekend of December, we do a, a, a luau slash retreat, so maybe we can do something like that too. But Absolutely. anybody here in Hawaii that happens to be listening, invite uh, – Al Smith to come out, and we'll teach you to surf too. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Until next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Hey, man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out.